public interest. I am Malika Ramsey. Thanks for joining us once again. On today's program, we discuss what's already somewhat in the air, and that would be the proposed renewal of the contract of the Chief Executive, Chief Election Officer, that is, uh, Mr. Koko Budu, and of course, the leader of the People's National Congress Reform and leader of the opposition, Mr. David Granger, is on here to shed some more light on APNU's take on Mr. Budu's uh, proposed um, uh, renewal, renewed contract. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Granger. Thank you very much for liking. All right, great to have you as always, sir. Mr. Gokul Budu has been making the news again, of course. Um, he's no stranger to the and no stranger to the public. We heard a lot about him during the 2011 uh, general election. Now, the focus is on whether his contract should be renewed as it relates to GCOM. Your thoughts or your sentiments? Well, Malika, I think that I speak for the APNU as well as the Alliance for Change in, uh, in feeling that... Um, Mr. Boudou's contract should not be renewed. He's been there for 20 years um, as a very senior officer in the Guyana Elections Commission. He's actually run uh, three elections, 2001, 2006, and 2011. Um, he probably is the most experienced um, official in the Election Commission at present. And he's probably run more elections than anybody else in Guyana. Um, so he is a very experienced person, and we have had serious problems in all three elections, 2001, 2006, 2011. And now that his contract has expired, I think it should stay expired. I think he should be allowed to go, to ride off into the sunset, and give somebody else an opportunity. I think the mistakes he made uh, are too serious to, to retain him in that post. I don't know how much in depth you can get because, and, and of course, this is just to make it clear for the public. What you're basically saying is that, yes, Mr. Boudou has been there for uh, m maybe more than two decades and all these elections were flawed. Would you like to point specifically, if you can, to it, as it relates to each election that he has been there for, the specific flaws? Well, in 2001, he was actually Deputy Chief Elections Officer when Mr. Stanley Singh, who was the substantive chief election officer, suddenly died. And just about two or three months before the election, Boudou was appointed. Um, in that election, the whole party, the People's National Congress, made um, complaints about the compilation of the voters list. And um, Mr. Corbyn, who was the leader of the party at that time, actually uh, issued a statement um, uh, which is very critical of the way the list was compiled. And it is our view that many people were disenfranchised, either because of a um, computer faults or because of registration faults. But these errors were traced back to um, Mr. Budu, who at that time was responsible for registration. So um, as long ago as 2001, we had problems with the Election Commission and with Mr. Boudou's tenure of office there. Uh, not surprisingly, the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration confirmed his appointment, and so we went into the 2006 elections. Now, that was a, a really crazy situation because mainly, um, particularly in the Upper Demerara Babis region, uh, what is called Region 10, um, it was quite clear from the compilation results uh, done by the Alliance for Change that um, several polling stations, the results of several polling stations had been omitted. And the vice chairman of the party at that time, Ms. Uh, Sheila Holder, and the chairman of the party, Mr. Kemraj Ramjatan, actually went into the election commission and spoke to um, Mr. Gokul Budu, who was in charge of the elections, and according to the newspaper reports, according to the newspaper reports, he says, never mind everything, it will be all right. And I don't know if the Alliance for Change let the ball drop, but everything was not all right. What happened is that they eventually went to the court, and the Chief Justice, Mr. Ian Chang, um, threw out the petition, which is very odd, because... In most jurisdictions, um, elections petitions are taken very seriously. 
because they deal with representation, they don't deal with procedure, you know, they deal with representation of the people, and that is the highest um, form of democracy. So they are heard very promptly, and uh, I think most uh, authorities are careful to ensure that uh, the, the person who's bringing the case, the appellant, um, is um, given a fair hearing, and the lines for change, uh, I think, went away from the, that uh, court case, feeling that it was not treated fairly. In fact, um, in 2009, this is like three years after the elections were held, um, the files seemed to have disappeared. So it was uh, a very disappointing uh, way to deal with an election issue. The long and short of it is that um, Alliance for Change effectively lost the seat um, in the Upper Demara region, Region 10, and it was given to the PPP, and that justified um, Mr. Samuel Hines, who was the Prime Minister at the time, and he still is the Prime Minister. He was elected to the National Assembly as the representative of, um, of that region. And then we come to 2011, and we talk about that. But those are the three elections, and we feel that uh, Mr. Boudou, who was the administrative head of the machinery in all three elections, um, made some mistakes which um, are not acceptable. Uh. Okay, uh, well, I know we can't necessarily talk about wrongs in 2011 being corrected as yet because we have not yet gone through an election after that. But would you say, in your estimation and, and the observances of um, the members of APNU, that the wrongs or the mistakes that would have been made in 2001 and 2006, was the public uh, um, been given a proper explanation for this and were there any moves to correct these mistakes under Mr. Boudou's watch? Well, what we saw in 2011 indicated that um, Mr. Boudou um, is a serial um, um, maker of mistakes because, um, I mean, he is, um, as you may know, he is uh, a lecturer, he used to be a lecturer at the University of Ghana. He has a master's degree in education. He has um, a bachelor's degree in education. I think he studied in England on a British government scholarship. And he's very experienced, as I said, he's been at the, uh, the election commission for nearly 20 years. So he's not a fool. Um, so after the errors of 2001, compounded by the errors of 2006, um, we expected that he would have learned his lesson. But what happened in 2006 was uh, was so ridiculous that um, it, it, it was unbelievable. I think many Guyanese can recall looking at a television um, screen with some astonishment because um, the diplomats were there, all of the um, invitees were there in the Pegasus waiting for the announcement of the election results. and. Um, this is like three days after the elections were held. Other countries, uh, Jamaica, I know, which had elections afterwards, and St. Lucia, which had elections on the same day, announced the election results the same night. And here we were, three days after the elections, and nobody was on the stage. In fact, um, uh, somebody who might have been mentally challenged actually ran up on the stage and there was some nonsense going on. But the point they're making, is that Mr. Boudou actually submitted to the election commission. He's not a member of the commission. He is the chief election officer, and the commission, commission is not responsible for administering the election, um, but it's a sort of body meant to oversee the administrative machinery. And he actually submitted um, a calculation which suggested that the People's Progressive Party would have gotten 53% of the vote and would have gotten, I think it might be 33 seats out of the National Assembly. And it was uh, Mr. Vincent Alexander, an opposition member of the uh, Election Commission, who pointed out that Mr. Boulou's uh, calculations were flawed. And it was as a result of that that um, the 
the allocation of seats was recalculated and it was found that the, um, the Partnership for National Unity got 26, the Alliance for Change got 7, and the PPP only got 32. Now, the, the thing is this. Um, one, the calculation was wrong, and two, if that result was announced, we would have had to go back to the courts. Once it was announced as a final result, um, we would have had to go to the court to um, bring about a reversal. Mm -hmm. it, what it meant is that the PPP would have gone into Parliament with the majority, mm -hmm. and we might have suffered the same fate that the AFC suffered in 2006 to 2009. That is, it would have been, it could have been the subject of delay, and files could have been lost and um, somebody might have found there some procedural error. And everything that we have achieved over the last 18 months in the Assembly would not have been achieved because um, there would have been serious, serious mischief. So, in my view, Mr. Boudou has been there for, as I said, nearly two decades, and he has been at the center of, of um, three significant controversies with, with um, you know, particularly with reference to the election results. If I can come off the mistakes and the controversies just for a little while, whose duty is it to appoint a new CEO? It should come out of the uh, Guyana Election Commission. That is my opinion. I could be corrected. But the Election Commission should um, go through the normal procedure. That is, they should advertise and qualified persons should apply, and they should be interviewed um, for suitability, and um, then they could have a short list, and the persons on that short list could be, um, maybe give them a second round of interviews. This is a very, very important appointment, very, very important appointment. And as I understand it at present, it is within the power of the commission to um, to either reappoint or to ensure that the contract is not renewed, Mr. Blue's present contract. Now, the commission is constituted um, in a way that I think it's what um, is called the Carter formula. President Jimmy Carter came here um, uh, several years ago and he proposed this formula in which the government side, the executive side, would nominate three. Uh, members of the commission, three commissions, commissioners, and the opposition side would nominate three commissioners. Um, and then you would have a chairman who would be nominated by the president. Uh, the, the problem is that it, it, it means that the two sides normally vote along party lines. And it might not necessarily be the best way of achieving a, a favorable outcome because uh, people tend to support a, a certain party line. So uh, it is, um, if let us say we have faith in the integrity of the commissioners, which we do, um, let them advertise and let the best person um, you know, win. Apart from, um, can the opposition uh, play any role in appointing that new commission? And, and does any name, is there a name or a person who comes to mind immediately that, you know, APN you would probably recommend and support for the position? No, I would like to prejudice the process by making such a, a proposal. What I could say is that we must, um, uh, we've had some trouble, some elections over the last um, 20 years. And we must approach the appointment of the chief elections officer from a professional point of view. And we should advertise in the whole Caribbean, okay. the whole English-speaking Caribbean. I don't have a name in my pocket, and um, I think it would be invidious to come up with one name. Let the best person come forward. Uh, wherever the person comes from, it might be Jamaica, or Barbados, Trinidad, whatever the person's background, let us look at that background to see whether the person is, is uh, properly qualified and let the best qualified person um, be appointed. Apart from not renewing the contract of the uh, Mr. Boudou, what's to stop 
the previous problems that we've had when it comes to elections in our country? What to stop those problems from reoccurring? Like uh, our country uh, has just celebrated its 47th anniversary of independence just a week ago. And we have a lot of experience in elections. We have a lot of intelligent people. As I said, in this case, Mr. Budu, he's got a, a master's of science degree, a bachelor's degree, so he's no fool. We have persons who can run the elections properly, but um, the problems have been that um, there's a perception out there in the public that uh, the elections um, starting from the registration process were not always efficiently managed. And there's also the perception that the perceived the, the inefficiency was designed to facilitate um, a victory or a majority by one particular side. And we have to get away from that. We have to make sure that elections are properly, properly um, conducted and that um, in particular the registration process is done um, more efficiently. Uh, instead of persons being obstructed from, you know, because of uh, the, you know, the actual birth certificate or some other qualification. For example, in, in some jurisdictions, even in the Caribbean, you know, a person who becomes 18 is notified by the state. The burden is on the state, but in Guyana, the burden is on the individual or his or her political party to ensure registration. But in normal jurisdiction, the, on the, on, the burden is on the state. And all it means is that that person must be able to go pick up the identification card and say, look, I am Malika Ramsey, and he's entitled to vote. But there are so many obstacles, and Guyana is so large that you have persons at sea who are fishing, you have persons in the hinterland in gold mining, we have a large diaspora. And what happened in the last election in 2011 there were over nearly 140,000 persons who were registered couldn't vote. And this was the problem in 2011, when there was uh, massive disenfranchisement. So we're not talking about the intelligence, we're talking about the ability of the chief elections officer to ensure that the systems are simplified and everything possible is done to allow um, qualified persons to vote. Um, the other thing is that um, we have to move, I mean, these are, our elections are very expensive as, as well because of this, con this registration process. And other organizations, you know, like the NIS, you know, don't have such a burden, certain registration process. I've had my NIS card for, you know, since I was employed in the Defense Force, you know, and it's a still valid, you know. I, Every month I can, um, you know, ensure that I can transact business. I don't have to keep doing changing this. We've had about three national ID cards already. And even people were complaining about the present national ID card. So there are systemic problems. And thirdly, there's absolutely no reason why it takes three days to calculate 400,000 votes. I mean, if you give some nursery school children, you know, um, 300,000 votes, it wouldn't take them three days. And this is what creates suspicion. What are they doing with the results for such a long time? Especially when we have a system in which the statements of poll should be agreed and posted on the polling stations, which means that by 10 or 11 o'clock at night, every guy in should know the outcome of the elections. Mr. Grant, I must jump in here because you, you spoke about results and the continued question is why do we take so long to get the results out there? And I don't think the Guyanese public, you know, would have ever gotten a proper response. Did APN you ever get a response as to why it takes so long for us to get proper results? The response which I'm aware of, it might not be the total response, is that uh, the commission, the chairman at least, if not the entire commission, um, the chairman was reluctant to make a declaration with some justification until 
every single original statement of Paul had been verified. Um, now, Guyana is so large. Guyana is larger than England and Scotland combined. We don't have proper roads in the hinterland. Um, many areas are only accessible by boat and um, by aircraft. And uh, it is, in fact, logistically difficult to get all of the statements of Paul physically to Georgetown, where the center is, um, within, the, within a couple of hours. But three days is far too long, and we have to put a system in place in which some authorities in every region could transmit those, uh, that information electronically. Um, and as long as the official you know, can verify it, maybe by the use of justices of the peace or police officers or some, some means, that information should be sent to the center. And once it's sent to the center, they can just publish. These are the unconfirmed results. By midnight, I mean, on the, on the occasion of um, the election of um, Ms. Portia Simpson Miller in Jamaica, I, I was up early, I think maybe by midnight, I checked into BBC and uh, she's been congratulated already in Jamaica with an electorate of, of over um, a million and a half or something like that. And we have 400,000 people and we, we can't get, get the numbers counted. Now that we have electronic media, it's quite ac you know, acceptable to, re to take results by electronic media, by, by phone or by email or some other way. Uh, people can actually photocopy things. And so, so this is a, a certified copy of the statement of poll. And they can send it electronically from my shelter or from Latin or anything else. So I think it's a bit of poppycock to, to, to say that um, we can't get results um, within within six hours or so, or at least within 12 hours, but 72 hours is unreasonable. And I think this has caused a lot of the suspicion in the past. In most countries in the Western Hemisphere, after the, after the poll, people go home and maybe um, get the dinner and sit down and look at television because they know that you know they're going to get results in a short time. In Guyana, there's always the suspicion and the build-up of tension and then, you know, results are fed by the spoonful um, and people suspect that something is going wrong, that the results are being uh, manipulated. So those are some of the problems. And I would like to feel that there's other prob there are other problems. Um, some of our supporters complain that uh, new polling stations have been opened. You know, in the last election, we had over 2,000 polling stations. And some people couldn't find the polling stations because at the last minute, polling stations um, were open in places which were previously not known to the voters. But isn't that illegal? And how can we stop that? Well, I'm not aware that it's illegal. Okay. What it seems is that it was certainly undesirable and unprecedented. Mm -hmm. But some people seem to know, some voters seem to know where the stations were, some people didn't, some voters didn't know. But there were lots of minor um, irregularities, and the point is that some of those irregularities, um, when taken together, could have added up to bring about a substantial change in the in the in the voting pattern, in the in the actual calculation of votes. Guyanese are expected to go back to the polls soon, and this is as it relates to uh, local government elections. In the event, and I'm probably trying to look into a crystal ball here, in the event that Mr. Bulu's contract is renewed, are you anticipating problems with local government elections? Well, I anticipate problems before we get to the elections if Mr. Bulu's um, appointment is renewed because AFC doesn't want him, okay. APNU doesn't want him. Okay. He has committed some errors, what, just to quote um, with Dr. Suraj Bali, human errors. And um, his contract is at, is at an end. So there is really no justification for his reappointment. And I think that there is going to be a popular outcry against um, his reappointment. If, you know. So I hope that good sense prevails and he's not reappointed. 
while you're hoping that good sense prevails, um, is David Granger and a Partnership for National Unity planning to take further action in the event that his contract is renewed? Yes, um, we have protested before. We protested since 2011, we protested in 2012, and we protested now that uh, we made it very clear that we are not prepared to tolerate his reappointment. We are not, um, we're not calling for any um, specific sanction against him. We are not accusing him of any specific illegality, but it, it is clear in our mind that his track record indicates that he's not a fit and proper person to continue that appointment beyond the uh, termination of his present contract. Finally, sir. Any, because I, and I know you recently went, met with um, Mr. Ramatar, the president of Guyana. Um, any discussions put forward by yourself or Mr. Ramatar regarding Mr. Gokul Budu during um, those consultations? Are, and are you, if not, are you expecting to have any discussions with the government as it relates to Mr. Budu? No. Um, at present, the matter is in the hands of the election commission, the Guyana election commission. Uh, my understanding is that Mr. Budu's contract has already expired at the end of April. I've also understood that the Commission is considering the contract. And I certainly have not discussed it with President Ramatar. I don't feel that it, he should get involved, it's not his business. Why not let the Commission do its work? Uh, but I, I certainly hope that no uh, political uh, action is taken to uh, to allow Mr. Budu to continue that post. I'm quite sure, I'm very, very confident that the population will regard that as being an unacceptable act and they are likely to behave in a manner that they feel fit and proper to prevent this reinstallation. And the AP and News commissioners are of the same view? That is my view, yes, that they are opposed to it. Okay, thank you very much, sir. A leader of the People's National Congress Reform and leader of the opposition, Mr. David Granger. This has been another edition of the Public Interest. I am Alaika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.